Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Koga and welcome to Hewitt Home. Anger, fear, anxiety, doubt, uncertainty, those are all feelings that we have just about thrown out the window. Well, and probably created a few new phobias as well. And speaking of phobias, I'll be sitting down later on with Winnipeg's own Aaron Cole, and he'll tell us the story behind his latest single, Phobia, and why it is so relevant right now. But first, I will have a sit-down conversation with pharmacist Ashley Iwasik. She is also the Vice President of Pharmacist Manitoba, and she will let you know that she is much more than a pharmacist filling a prescription. Hello, Ashley. It is so nice to meet you. I know we're virtual. I think this would have been a far more um, better conversation if I could have visited you in your old stomping grounds of River Heights. But uh, you know what? I want to welcome you. And first of all, the role of a pharmacist. Um, we kind of think, yeah, you're the person behind the counter that puts my pills in the bottle and like gives me the prescription and asks me if I have any questions and usually not and off I go. But um, it really is far more than that and I, I, let's, let's talk now, especially the world and what we live in now with COVID and the pandemic. Um, 2020 must have been an uh, eye-opener, at least for, for you yourself. Yeah, so thanks Tracy for having me. It's uh, great to be here and have this discussion with you, even if it's just virtual, that's uh, how it goes these days. Uh, so, I mean, definitely challenging, uh, unprecedented for sure in my career, and I'm sure everyone else's pharmacy career as well. Um, so there were lots of challenges that we had to face in the pharmacy uh, in terms of uh, procurement of PPE to keep everyone safe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had to implement some policies very quickly to make sure that both our, our clients and patients and, and staff were safe as well. And then we, uh, you know, we successfully rolled out the, the flu shot campaign, um, you know, ensuring all of these safety measures as well, um, which was a challenge for pharmacies for sure, but uh, one that we uh, rose to the occasion and, and turned out very successful. What were some of the questions and concerns, um, you know, from the people in your community? What were they talking to you about? Yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, uh, obviously one of the main concerns, especially at the start, was um, if they were going to have access to their medication. So whether or not, um, you know, there was going to be a supply chain issue uh, and how, uh, you know, we were going to be involved in that and, and um, just to ensure that they wanted to make sure they could still get their medication. And then now it's evolved. Um, we get a lot of vaccine questions, uh, whether or not the COVID vaccine in, is safe and effective. Um, when can we get it? We have a lot of Manitobans who, um, I know from my experience and experience of my colleagues who uh, uh, come in and, you know, they say, hey, I get my flu shot through you. Can I get my COVID vaccine here too? And so that's a really common question. And then just questions about COVID itself, you know, especially in the early days is, uh, you know, what can we do to best protect ourselves? What should we be using for sanitization? Those types of questions. It was quite an array, to be honest. And for yourself, Ashley, and your staff, even in, of course in the first lockdown, the unknowns there, um, obviously you know, there probably were some personal fears for you, you know, yourself, family, and your staff. Yeah, you know, there was a lot that we just didn't know at the start, right? And that kind of goes to show and there was constantly changing and evolving public health um, recommendations. And so we just did our best to you know, just keep up and, and listen to uh, the people making these recommendations um, in public health and, and um, you know, try and do as best we can and implement the measures to help keep each other safe. And, and uh, you know, that, that made everyone feel better for sure. Oh, yes. Okay, so uh, let's now maybe help the public know the difference or maybe define the role of a pharmacist versus a physician, I guess, so to speak. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and sort of some of the things that people might not know a pharmacist can do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for that question. Yeah, so our expertise is definitely um, different uh, than um, a prescriber or a physician, um, but at the same time, we all work on the same team, right? So, uh, but really what we want the public to see um, pharmacists as is your medication 
experts and medication management experts. So, you know, uh, that can be everything from uh, teaching you about your medications. I really consider one of the key parts of my job is to be an educator, actually. So mm -hmm. whether that be educating um, the individual or patient on, on their disease state, on the interactions with their drugs, um, on the medications themselves and so forth, you know, uh, knowledge is power and that really um, enables people to make informed decisions. And that's really an important aspect of our job as education. Uh, but different things we do that's kind of expanded over the last few years, especially would be things like um, administering uh, vaccines and drugs by injection. Um, it would be prescribing for minor ailments uh, like dermatitis and um, allergic rhinitis. Uh, we can um, extend prescriptions in, in circum different circumstances by continuing care. Um, so there's lots of different things that pharmacists can do now. Uh, and But definitely the most important thing is just, you know, if you have a medication question or a medication concern, whether it be, you know, um, a question about the actual drug or uh, you know, you're having, you're struggling how to, how to take it appropriately or to remember to take it, or you feel like you're on too many medications, you know, your pharmacist is the best person to ask in those, in those circumstances. Oh. Oh, and you're, well, maybe it's in your opinion or whether you can answer this question. Where do you see the role of pharmacists in this rollout of the vaccine, um, whether it be educators or perhaps will we be able to go to a pharmacy and get our, our COVID vaccine? Yeah, so what's really exciting is that uh, very recently we've started discussions with the vaccine task force in Manitoba. Um, so, you know, the intention there is that pharmacists will be a part of the rollout plan. Um, and so that's obviously very exciting and we're willing and able, right? So we just did a lot. Um, all of the grant work is kind of done in terms of we just did the flu campaign and it was very successful. And so pharmacists are ideally positioned um, across the province in rural and remote locations, mm -hmm. uh, very accessible, obviously, that's a key part of our, uh, our position. Um, and so we're, we're ready to be able to help in the rollout and help in an actual administration of the vaccine. And so it's just very exciting that we've started these this communication with uh, you know, the, the vaccine task force. And there's a, a lot of logistics, obviously, mm -hmm. that need to be worked out in these types of uh, situations. And so hopefully we can uh, get it rolling as soon as possible. Oh, well, that is exciting news. And Ashley, yourself, you work at a community a pharmacy, local pharmacy in River Heights. And uh, let's touch on, I guess, the familiarity that you would have, your relationship with your clients or the people that come into your, into your uh, pharmacy. You know them. Um, there's an ease. Whereas if you go to a big box store, you may not have that. So, so for you, obviously, being connected to your community and serving, you know, in, in a smaller kind of area is something important to you? Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, this is one of the most fulfilling aspects of my personal job is um, having uh, really great relationships with uh, my medications here. And, um, you know, this is a fairly small pharmacy that I manage here. And so, I basically know everyone who comes through the door. Uh, and the, so one of the unique parts about pharmacy is that um, your patients visit you fairly often. So <laughs> yeah, like sometimes weekly, like you know, I see people very often. So you really get to know people and you really, um, really become a really trusted resource for them, which is, I mean, so important and, and something I am very honored to have and, and very, I, I value it very much. <laughs> Did you always dream of being a pharmacist? I know that might kind of sound silly or, or you know, but. Yeah, no, that's a great question too, you know. Um, so I wasn't sure when I, what I wanted to do after high school. I know it sounds a little bit cliche, but I always wanted to help people. And uh, so I had actually shadowed a pharmacist in high school as part of our career placement. And nice. I just found that the knowledge base was really interesting. A mix of chemistry and biology. And I was definitely into sciences and um, you know, wanted um, a profession where I was able to interact with, with people. And this was kind of just the perfect fit. And here we are. Oh, wow. 
and you are a vice president of Pharmacist Manitoba. That's being right. yes, and so being on a board like this, that can hopefully put a you know shine a brighter light on the role of pharmacist because I I truly believe that you are a very integral part of our Medicare, and sometimes or more often not thought of. So in this bigger, in this more official role, what do you hope or what, what do you see the future for pharmacists and what would you like to bring to the table? Yeah, so I mean, uh, one of the most important things is that we're able to practice to our full scope with the training that we have. And so um, some things have been implemented that we're authorized to do, but then we aren't necessarily compensated for them. So um, that's what we're really working towards is uh, able to practice to our full abilities and then to be properly um, and appropriately compensated for those. So that what that looks like uh, is potentially um, expanding some things that haven't been touched in Manitoba, let's say, but in other provinces. So things like therapeutic substitution, uh, which just means your ability to uh, substitute drugs that, that are uh, similar to one another, um, might be based on cost for the patient or, or drug interactions, something like that. Um, so that's, you know, one thing to consider, but also it would be, you know, if we're um, more fairly uh, reimbursed or remunerated for things like flu, which um, we're the lowest paid in the country uh, in terms of pharmacists. Uh, so if, as we get, you know, as we move that um, up to a fair amount uh, and just, you know, we just want to be reimbursed based on what our colleagues are, are reimbursed for across the country, um, then it's going to just increase availability uh, to Manitobans, right? So as, you know, as, as it becomes a fair compensation model, then the uptake by pharmacists in the province is going to increase. And that just increases um, access to care, right, for Manitobans. So it's, it's a win-win, really. But so those are the things that we're, we're working towards. We just want Manitobans to know that we're here for you and that we care about our patients and that, uh, you know, our ability to practice um, to our full scope really uh, just is a win-win situation for the healthcare system. Yes, well, you know, it, it's something that's so important. And I, and I wanted to kind of lastly, because it's, it's so important now when you say the healthcare of Manitobans, it's not, it's not only health physically, but it's health mentally too as well. And I just wanted to know, you know, for the role of the pharmacist, what kind of role will you play, you know, moving forward, as mental health is going to be a growing, growing concern for a lot of people all over? Yeah, so I mean, mental health is obviously, yeah, definitely a huge concern and on everyone's mind these days, I think, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a pharmacist, um, the first thing is that we're a, a really accessible touch point for people, right? Yes. Uh, so it might just be having that, you know, able to have that regular discussion about how are you doing today? You know, every time that you come into the pharmacy, whether that's for your um, weekly delivery, I might call you to set that up and just, you know, how are things going? Tell me about how you're feeling these days. Or it might be, um, you know, when you actually come into the pharmacy. It might also be discussions about what's appropriate for you based on your current mental health. You know, do you need a referral to um, a physician for potential medications? Do you have questions about you know, which medication might be best for you in this situation? Do you need a referral to um, a counseling service? You know, these are all questions that your pharmacist can answer for you and, and, uh, and definitely be a huge resource for you in the community. Oh, well, that's so good to hear because I know that there's probably a lot of people out there that, you know, are too afraid to ask or don't know if they can ask. So this is wonderful. And uh, you know what? I say, you know, your pharmacist is your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, well, you know what? Thank you so much, Ashley. Uh, I know that in the days forward, hopefully we'll be out of this code red and we'll be able to have a little bit more flexibility with our lives, but um, we certainly appreciate and understand now better on uh, what you can do for us. So um, all the best. So Great. thank you very well, much. Yeah. yeah, stay safe and healthy. Yeah, thanks Tracy. Thanks so much for having me. It's been wonderful.
Well, it is always wonderful to introduce people to a rising star on the music scene. We are starving for music, and I know that, Aaron, you are starving to get in front of real people. <laughs> but welcome to Hugh at Home, Aaron Cole, and you got a new song out, and it is so apropos, I guess, Phobia. So let's talk about the song and how you even got into music, Aaron. Uh, yeah, for sure. So. Um this track um, was written last year, and it's, I mean, it's called Phobia. It kind of speaks for itself in that way. Um, I really wanted to write a song that kind of taps into my own personal anxieties, uh, my social anxiety, the kind of anxieties that you feel when you're in a relationship. Um, and I think it also really kind of speaks to my generation and like several generations. Pretty much if you're a millennial or younger, I think we all struggle with that kind of disconnect in the age of technology. Um, so it, it really speaks to that. It really speaks to those walls we put up, um, that little voice in your head that's, that's you know, uncertain and not sure. Um, and I really wanted to put this song out now because I do think it really relates to the time we're living in, too. Uh, one of the lyrics is actually, um, you can try to love me, but I'll be just out of reach. So if it, something says six feet, it's that. Um, <laughs> and it's really, yeah, just this whole fear that we're living in about not being able to get close to people and, and connect to people. And it's kind of a real world situation. And it's also kind of like a, a personal, intimate relationship type of thing. Um, and yeah, in terms of how I got into music, um, I really just started writing and recording music a few years ago. Um, I put out my first song in uh, 2018, my first single. Um, I was on a bit of a different track before then. I, I went to university. I did some traveling, things like that. Um, and it took kind of a bit of a push for me to like really get into it because it's, you know, it's it's kind of an uncertain career choice. And I've always been a, a pretty introverted, like focused uh, person. So, um, yeah, I put out that song and then I've been working with a producer in, in Toronto on, on all these tracks and, and putting them together. So it's been really great. Well, and I have to mention, though, the subject matter is serious and you think like some sort of ballad. No, I, I, I love it. it. It reminds me of 80s, 90s kind of dance music yeah. and it, it's really catchy. But also, too, Aaron, I'm curious now, um, you're talking about your generation and obviously this is like a time that we never could predict and it has a big effect on the millennials and and yourself too as well you had mentioned that you were on a different path university kind of the old school kind of, i shouldn't say old school but what your yeah. mom and dad want you to do and yep. uh you know and to take that step and really be true to yourself that's uh, that's a pretty big step what was it? Was there one thing or one moment, Aaron, where you said, no, music is going to be my path? Uh, well, I actually, <laughs> it's a bit of a funny story because like I went to university and I actually applied to, to go to medical school. Um, so I was, that's the track that I was on and I got rejected to that. And it was like a huge relief. It was like, <laughs> it, it wasn't like I was disappointed at all. I was like, this is amazing. Like, this is exactly what was supposed to happen. And I'm, I'm glad I didn't end up going down that path because it's not the one I was supposed to be on. <laughs> That's so, crazy. So instead of yeah. Dr. Aaron Cole, you're going to be, you know, superstar Aaron, <laughs> rock star Aaron. <laughs> yes, <that> was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so talking about the music now, working with a producer in Toronto, 
in times like these. And I mean, probably you would be doing it anyways online too because of distance. But, you know, does it make a difference when you can't be in person working together on a song? Or does it really have that any, any more effect than doing stuff like we are right now on Zoom? Um, it, it's a bit of a bit of both. Um, I think I was pretty lucky because a lot of the songs that are going to be coming out this year, we got them written before COVID happened. Oh, cool. Um, I, so like I've worked in Toronto. I've been to LA. We've been working with uh, different uh, co-writers and things on things. It's been a very collaborative experience. Um, and so a lot of the rights were done before COVID happened. Um, basically what COVID has done is shifted everything and delayed everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I was supposed to um, head to Toronto to do all the recording at the end of March and then that got canceled. <laughs> so I, it ended up have, having, having about like half a year later than it was supposed to. Um, but luckily with all of, you know, this zoom and everything, it's actually been really good. And a lot of innovations have been happening so that we were able to do a lot of the work um, online, just like this. Um, and I could hear all the music and, and it, it worked out, so. And for you personally, I mean, you mentioned too of your own personal anxieties. How has, obviously writing a song about it, but performing it, you know, and hopefully performing it in front of real people, but uh, being able to sing and be able to be a musician, how has that helped you, I guess, grow? Um, it's definitely... I, I say that I have a kind of an introverted personality, but I have extroverted interests, <laughs> if that makes sense. So like I love to travel. I went backpacking in South America. Like these are kind of things that I wouldn't consider myself to have ever wanted to do when I was younger. Um, but, you know, I I realized that there's so much in life that I want to experience and so many things that I want to do that I have just really tried hard to push myself to do those things. Um, and. I, I, I want to connect with people and I want to make music. So um, I did a show over a year ago now um, and it was such a fun experience and I had such a good time and it was, I was so anxious and so nervous to do it, but I'm so happy I did because it was a lot of fun and I got to connect with all these amazing people. So, yeah. Well, and it's interesting because a lot of artists are like you, Aaron, where they are very introverted, but you know, a different persona as soon as they step on stage and the spotlight's <laughs> yeah. on them. So kudos to you. And I guess lastly, I mean, being a musician in Winnipeg, and Winnipeg has an amazing, um, you know, group of talented, talented singer-songwriters from all genres. You know, had you been, say, well, and you have worked in Toronto and L.A., but say you were in a big city like this, would you have all, do you think the same opportunities that you've had here in Winnipeg, being a smaller city? Um, yeah, I think it just depends on what the situation would have been. Um, I've, like I said, I've been working out, out of Toronto primarily. Um, but like you said, there's definitely a lot of really fantastic artists here. Mm -hmm. Um, I will actually shout out one artist that I just stumbled across this year, actually. Um, it's Boniface or Boniface, in, I guess it's French name. Mm -hmm. Um, they're like amazing. And I just kind of discovered them this year and they're definitely at like the top of my Spotify rap for this past <laughs> year. Just such good, like electronic kind of almost indie pop music and that's mm -hmm. what I really love um, and really what I want to go for toward is pop music so yeah well that's good so 2021 what's your biggest wish <laughs> uh, just to get back out there on that stage. <laughs> yeah. that's, you know I think that's pretty much every artist that everyone's just craving to get back in front of people um, 2020 was like good and bad in different ways depending mm -hmm. on how you look at it I suppose um, and I definitely was able to really focus on this new music and, and kind of get it to where we wanted to get it. So it's been good to be able to take our time on it. Um, but now I just want to get it out there. I want people to hear it. I want <laughs> to connect with people and I want to, you know, as soon as those, those doors open back up, I want to be doing shows again. Well, I think that will be probably the fastest, uh, genre of entertainment to just come out of the doors running because I yeah. think everybody will want to have that kind of connection. So Phobia is coming out, I believe, the end of this month, January 29th. 29th, yeah. Yes. So where can, and that we can find it, iTunes, anywhere, everywhere? Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, everywhere. Spotify, iTunes, whatever you like, whatever works for you. Oh, uh, well, yeah. it's so nice talking to you. So I know, Aaron, 
keep us uh, tuned when that first show happens. Winnipeg's sure. so proud of you, and uh, yeah, we're hoping for bigger and better things. We're going to leave you with a little clip from Phobia, so you know you might get your little groove on there. And uh, <laughs> thanks so much, Aaron. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. I can't hurt if I never get in it. I know what you want from me, but there's one thing holding me. I got a phobia. I know where this could go, but I just gotta stop. I got a phobia. Phobia. Welcome back to Hugh at Home. Well, it's time for a life lesson. When you're down and you're only concentrating on what is going wrong in your life, perhaps it's time to focus on what's going right. Here's our life coach, Linda Dostowich. Happy New Year, everyone. 2021, we made it, we did it. Good for us. Now, some of you might be feeling amazing. Some of you might be highly irritated with the people around you, with life in general. Don't worry, nothing's gone wrong. You have a normal human brain that is designed to seek out all the negative things it's scanning for dangers, but it is not helpful to us. So I'm going to offer you this, focus on what's going right. And it's not just a platitude of focus on the positive and see the good. Um, that can actually add to a person's irritation. I don't know if anyone else has ever had that experience, but I certainly have. Um, but what you can do when you find yourself just in a slump, you're finding everything overwhelming or irritating, uh, you can challenge your brain to focus on what is going right. And that will just subtly shift your energy. You'll start to notice and you can actually make a list, list the top five things that are going right. And if they are small, so be it. You know, if your eggs turned out perfectly this morning, or if your hair looks good, or if, uh, which mine kind of does today, um, which has, it has not for the last few days. I've kind of just had a few days of just chill, relax, not do my hair, which is all good. But then I reach a limit and I'm like, look in the mirror and go, honey, get your hair done. Um, anyway, so Focus on what is going right. Where your attention goes, your energy goes. So think of it this way. You know, if your partner or your kids um, are driving you crazy and you are starting to just notice every little thing they're doing wrong, that's where your energy is going. That's where your attention is. And it's not going to do any favors for your relationship if you're pointing out what's going wrong and, you know, how people can do better. Nobody likes that. Uh, so if you can challenge yourself to shift over to noticing what is going right. Now, I have a new puppy. What I'm doing with him is good boy, good boy, constantly throughout the day, focusing on what he's doing well. And uh, you know what? It can work for our uh, significant others and our children and even ourselves. This is the key. Focus on what you're doing right. You know, we so often have that default of what we're not doing enough of, what we should be doing better. And if you can take that energy and attention to what you're doing right, what you're succeeding at, what is making you come alive right now, what makes you feel good, what you are really enjoying in your life. Focus your attention there. That's where your energy goes and that's where you can build on. Uh, so it's a great practice. I I hope you try it. Uh, even, yeah, write out five things that are going well and really focus on what is working and what is going right. Happy New Year, everyone. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our guests on today's show and leave you with this question. What is your phobia? We want to know, so send us an email to hello at ilikeyou.com or Facebook or Instagram us at ilikeyou. But for now, stay safe and healthy. And we'll see you next time on Hue at Home.